Welcome to the talk about character physics in Unreal Engine 5. Um, so I would like to introduce you to a really, really cool feature where we can have really fine control of our character physics on top of any linear animation or whatever you want to do. And it gives me also the chance to work with this really adorable little puppy. So what we want to do today is we want to figure out, can I pet the dog? So I will walk you through the steps, through the basics first, and then hopefully at the end, I will show you how um, we can play with this adorable little puppy. So let's start with something simple so I can explain the basic steps. So here I just have a very simple blueprint with just a static mesh. So it's just a box and it's set to physics uh, and has a mass. So if I would now like use this and give it a little kick, maybe a little bit more, and you can see it's just floating into the air, There's no gravity right now. Um, so we have no control over it. So the first part I want to do is explain you a little bit about puppeteering. So we're talking about like stop motion puppeteering, someone from outside moving bones around and bringing something in position. That's what we do first. And that's what we will do with this box now. So let's get some control over the box with a control. So the control itself is a, is a plug-in we, uh, you see now a German tr guy trying to type on a US keyboard. So this is actually pretty challenging for me more than it might look like. But at the end of the show, I might, I might switch to a US keyboard at home. Who knows? So here's a physics control. It's a plug-in, it's experimental, but we are really serious about it. So um, let me show you how it works. So first we do, we create, we create a control. And when we take a look at that, we have a parent mesh and a child mesh. So that's what I'm, I meant before. So we put our little cube here as a child mesh. So now it's a child of nothing. In our case, it's a child of the world. So it's like outside forces um, will move it around. So let's see what this does. If I now hit simulate, and if we now follow where the dog is looking, because he's currently looking always at the cube, you can see there's a cube. The cube currently tries to reach a target and I didn't specify a target, so it's at zero, 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 and that is means the world origin, but what you also can see, it can't reach it because of collision. So we already have a little bit of control over it, but it doesn't really do what we want. So let's, let's take a closer look at the node um, and uh, set the target. So if we make us a, a target, we can set the target uh, position. And for that, we're using the actor the actor location at begin play. So we're saying like where you were at the beginning, please try to stay there. So how it, does it try to stay there? We can use the control data for that to manipulate like the linear strength, the damping, the angular strength, the angular damping. There's more to it and you have more finer control, but that are the four ones we will work with. I prepared a little um, variable here I exposed on spawn. So it's basically just the default values, but now we can change them in the viewport. So with this done, let's give it now a little nudge and you see it's trying to get back to the original point where we said like, this is your target. Please try, please try to reach that. Okay, so if we now take a look at the control data, we say like, oh, the damping, let's reduce this a bit, like 0 0.1 you can see the difference. So the strength is still the same, but now he's oscillating because he has a much lower damping ratio. So he's trying to get there. Okay, so with this done, let's now bring in another cube and let's take a look what this one does. Because it's basically exactly the same as the other one, but now instead of saying like you are connected to the world, we say you are connected to another actor. And I expose this actor variable so we can set it. And then we are saying like take the actor transform and make it a local transform and that is your target. So what this looks like, if I select that and say like, okay, this is your parent now. So the um, purple box should follow the blue box and I hit play. And I now move it around, you see the yellow, the purple box tries to follow that. So if I would I rotate it around, it's trying to stay in the same relative location with it. So we could go further and just say like, okay, let's do another one. And let's say you are now, this is your parent. So if I now simulate, I already have a chain of bones following each other with controls in between. And the cool thing is they are interacting with the world. So I have 
now already something I have fine control over um, and it's reacting to forces in the world. Okay, that's all good and nice. So that was the puppeteering part. Let's go one step further. And I want to show you a little cute worm. Um, and this worm is consisting of three parts. It has a head, it has a middle and it has a tail. Um, and what we want to do now is doing really quickly some procedural animation so he's worming around. Um, I will show you how it, how it looks like. So in the blueprint, as said, it's just like containing of three big body parts. And then in between we have a constraint, which is something that's in the engine for ages. And here we set the linear, dem the linear limits to locked, so it doesn't move away. And the angular limits are completely free. So um, when I now go here and hit simulate, you can see it's just collapsing under each other, but it tries to stay together. So what I want to introduce now, instead of like the stop motion analogy, we want to do muscles in between those. So we have some strength, so it's trying to keep up and fighting against uh, the gravity. So I take the physics control and this time we do a named control. Because the cool thing is we can make this all in setup, but we can also change nearly all the data in real time. And that's what we will do now. So first we make a control and then we say, okay, the head is a parent and the middle is following the head. And then we give it a name so we can address it later and we call it head middle. And then again, we need some uh, control data. And when we take a look, I do not care about linear strings right now. I care about angular strings. It's really like, you really can see this as a muscle. Okay, so this is done. So let's do it also for the, for the rear part. So in this case, we want the middle to be the parent and we want the tail to follow the middle. Okay, and then we will call this middle tail. Okay, now when we hit simulate, you can now see instead of he's completely collapsing, we have made this muscles who trying to uh, hold him up. Um, so that was step one. Step two is now we have to rotate him so he can worm around. So I take the control and on tick, we will change the target orientation. Target orientation. And now we have, can access it, because, access it because we gave it a name. So this one is head middle. And then currently we only caring for the jaw or for the pitch. And I prepared as, as you, you really don't want to see a German guy trying to type here. So I, I prepared some stuff. So we have the time and we have a sine wave and then we multiplying that with an angle. So we have some, uh, some up and down movement. And then we do the same for the rear part. which then is middle tail. And we give it a little bit of an offset so they don't move synchronously. And now in the viewport, let's give our little guy a bit of room. And when we hit play, you can see he begins to crawl around because now we change the target orientation of the muscles. And he's interacting with the world, as you can see with the, uh, with the beach ball. Okay, if you think that was adorable, let's now go to the dog. So the dog is a little bit more complex than a worm. Um, a skeleton normally has much more bones and joints um, than just like three bodies. Um, so here is our dog with a physic asset um, and you can imagine it's exactly the same. So I have different bodies and I have constraints and the constraints in this case are limited. So he's coming in really awkward um, uh, uh, poses. I will do no, now something I actually dislike a little bit, so bear with me. I will hit simulate, so uh, this poor guy is collapsing, but um, it helps me demonstrate something because this is now, okay, stop it. Um, this is now, you can imagine this is like a marionette. I made a marionette, but I don't have strings. So the control component is like strings for that marionette. So let's make those strings. So the dog itself is just a normal character that comes with the engine. So it's based on a normal character. It has a capsule, it has a, it has a mesh, it has some character movement. I also added some groom. So because the question is, can we touch, can, can we pet the dog? And I want to have him really fluffy. So I added a lot of strands, maybe a little bit more than I should, but um, uh, he's really cute like that. So for the animation part, 
And that's really straightforward. It has an animation blueprint with a locomotion state machine that's just blending between walking and running. And then we have uh, a slot where we can play an animation in, a montage. And then I'm a really big fan of control rig. So I use the control rig to position the feet on the ground to do some corrections. Um, and then he can look at stuff. That's actually pretty cool. And I will come to that at the end of the presentation because the conjunction, the, 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 the the control rig and the physics thing is working very well together. Okay, so here's that. So now let's uh, let's create the controls we need. So here is my physics control. And what we want to do now is the dog has different limbs. He has four legs, he has a spine, he has a tail, he has a head. Um, and it wouldn't be Unreal Engine if there wouldn't be um, a note for that. And that's called cre create controls and body modifiers from limp bones. I know it's a mouthful, but this is actually doing the magic and creating all our strings for our marionette. First, it needs a skeleton mesh, so let's take that. And second, it needs a limb setup data, which is an array. Uh, I prepared that, so let's open that up for a second. Uh, because it's super easy and straightforward. You're just saying like, okay, everything, every bones below the neck belongs to something I call head. Everything be be below the clavicle be belongs to an arm. And that's how I define the whole setup of the limbs. And then I have my world space control data, which is, you remember, that is the puppeteering part. And then I have my parent space control data, which is the values for my, uh, for my muscles. And then um, in this case, he comes with animations and animations is like stop motions from outside. It's like me moving the box around, but in this case, the animation is moving the bounce around. So I will enable that. And then let's for now simulate all the bodies and do not care about gravity for a second. So uh, with this done, we can bring our little doggy in, put him on this platform. Uh, let's briefly move him around and press play. So here he is. If I now lower his strength and like begin to shake the platform, you can see something awesome happening. We have now dogs in space because we actually simulate all his body. So he's full rectal um, and he cannot follow his animation because he has no strength. So, but it gives me the opportunity to explain me some, uh, show you and explain you something really nice. First, uh, let me add the sprint string for a second only to do a breakpoint here. And then if I hit play, we can take a look what this function is actually spitting out because it's doing all world space controls. And here are now all the bodies I defined. So I could access every single body now and operate on them like I did with the name controls on the worm. But there's more to it because for all the limbs, it actually made sets. So I said there's a head. So now under the head, I'm having my neck, my head, my ears, my jaw, so I can operate on something on, on, uh, on the head instead of like accessing every single body and manipulating the body. So what I don't have is something a set for the feet because what I want to do now is I want to simulate him completely, but not his feet because they should stand on the platform. So I can define own sets. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking the toe and saying you belong to the set feet and I do the same for the for the hands And then I'm saying okay is this set now everything please do kinematic and I can go further because now I can also say like okay I don't like the uh, the strength the damping um, like in general for the whole for, for the whole body I want to like specify it a little bit more granular so I save world space for the head I have a little bit more strength for world space for the tail, I actually reduce the strength so it's more influenced um, by the forces from outside. So let's briefly hook this up. And now go back to our platform and hit play. Then when I begin to move the platform, you can already begin to see how he's playing his idle animation, but the forces when he's reaching the end with the platform affecting him. So if I would lower the strength now, it's a little bit harder for him. Oh my God, we shouldn't go so far. Um, or I can lower the damping or I can higher the damping and then you can see he's holding up pretty well. Uh, I could also say like, um, what about, let's stop that and let's do gravity. So I can now say like how much gravity, how much strength does he has against gravity. Okay, so here we have that. Um, I want to show you how I made this interface because it shows very well how you can influence it in real time. So I briefly open that up. 
and go to the graph. And here, when I move a slider, it's a, it's a value between zero and one. And then I'm just multiplying it. And then I'm setting everything in world space um, with this value. So I'm changing how much strength he's having, but on his whole body. Um, and I'm doing it in absolutes. So I'm currently overriding what I may, might have set up earlier. Um, what is a little bit smarter way to do is using multipliers. So I could say I make the whole setup with absolutes and then afterwards I'm just using multipliers to scale them up and down. And that's what I'm doing here with the tail. So let's start this again and let's enable gravity and let's give him a little bit of, um, of strength. And then I play an idle animation where he's waggling the tail. And if I'm now separating the tail from the rest, I have now a slider where I can only influence the tail, for example, like you see here. Um, so now, and it, this is with the, with the modifier. Okay, so I have that. Um, now our doggy did really well, so I think we should really reward him. So I prepared some, some really fluffy bones here. So no, no dog was harmed in this presentation, but it shows, it shows a little bit what else I can do. Because when you, when you, let's get rid of the gravitation, shake it again. So if you have something like that, you can imagine you have a conversation of characters in a train with very good handmade animation, but on top you have this. And that makes really a big difference because it grounds the characters um, in the world. And I can show you what the difference is when I, let's lower the, the, the strength a bit, when I switch it off. So now I don't do it anymore. So you can see that's really a difference between that. So now no physics is applied and, and now it's with the physics. So I think it's very clear what it means. Okay, so now we have a dog. We want to answer the question, can I pet the dog? I think one step is needed. He needs to be super excited about being pet. So we, we, let's, let's add what we did with the worm before um, to our dog. Because what we also can do is mixing in um, the procedural stuff with the linear stuff. So I have here now a dog with a tail set up. And when we take a look inside of him, he's, it's a parent of the dog we just made. So we have all that setup we made and now we're saying like, okay, the tail, we don't want to do the puppeteering thing. We want the procedural thing. So let's do muscles now. So we will enable that. And then I do exactly the same as what I did with the worm. We're taking the time, we're running to a sine wave, we're multiplying it with, uh, with an angle and um, a value between zero and one for his excitement. And if I press play now, you can see he's very excited to be here at GDC presenting for you. So it's really cool. But if he, like, if the day goes longer, he's maybe only a little bit excited. Like, but uh, we, we are super excited still. So uh, here it is. So I have really fine control in real time over different body parts um, on this little doggy. So I have the doggy. He's excited. So the last step I'm needing is I need a hand. So let's take a look how I made a hand. Um, I, took, I, I took from the VR template the hand and I added a physics asset and then I did some constraints and the constraints are limited so the fingers don't break in the wrong direction. That's all. And if, I, if we take a look inside of the blueprint for the hand, it's exactly the same as for the dog. We're using the create controls and body modifiers from limb bones. And when we take a look at the limbs, you can see now the limbs are the fingers. So it's index, middle finger, pinky, uh, etc. So with this setup done, I, um, I also used a control like for the box. So I'm binding the hand now to the world. So I can move the hand around, but not like just setting the absolute value, but having like with the box, a little bit of control about how it's interf uh, interacting with the box. So this is, um, I have now a control between the hand mesh and the world. And the last piece I'm needing is on tick, I'm setting the target position and orientation and I'm taking the mouse position for that and I'm taking where I'm looking at with a little bit of a hunt offset so it's properly orientated and that's all. So let's take a look how this uh, is working. So if I spawn in my hand, you can see when I move it a little bit, there's less influence, when I move it really fast, more influence and it also means I can now like touch stuff. So. If you ever wanted to know how your textures feel like, or like if I wouldn't have run out of time, this would have been interactive grass actually, then we couldn't touch grass. Or I, I can also touch the trees. My colleague Aaron really finds this super creepy and always tells me, don't do it. But I think it's awesome, so here. I mean, have you, this is really, this is really good texture. Um, okay, so now I have my hand, I have my dog. 
I have a dog that's exciting, excited, so let's see how this works together. So if I go now here, and I have to be careful because this mouse is super sensitive and I can tell you if I misdo that, this looks really like... So, but yeah, good dog, nice. So that was actually my whole goal for this show and then it was a week, a week to go to GDC and you know how it is with game developers, you begin to feature creep. Um, so I thought like, oh my gosh, so I have a hand, I have a dog, so what about playing fetch and using physics control all over the place? So that's what I did. So let's go to the last part and let's see how we can play fetch with him. So first of all, we have the stick itself. That's just a physics object. And then we have the hand. So the hand is a child of the hand I have just shown you. And the only thing I added is a control between the palm and the stick, which I can enable. So now I can attach the stick to the palm. So that's, that's one thing. The other thing is when I'm holding the left mouse button, he's trying to grab the object. So what it's doing, I am I'm enabling the control. I tell the stick that's grabbed and then I didn't have any animations for the hand. So I just used sequencer. Uh, so edit with FA control to just make a very fast pose. So I have that. So that's it. And then when I release it, it gets thrown, but that's basically just an impulse. Um, the stick is getting and then I disable the control. I set back my my post to a neutral one And then I'm just like use moving the hunt a little bit around in space um, And that's it. So uh, I can show you how that works So here's my hand can go there and now I can grab it and Throw the stick So we have the hand we have throwing the stick. So the only last part we need is let's bring in our champion. So this dog is now a child of all what we have done before. And when we open him up, he has a very simple AI controller. I will not go too much into the AI, but it's, it's not even called an AI. It's just like he's trying to get to the stick. And if he's near the stick, he's grabbing the stick and then he brings it back and then he drops it. It's super, super simple. The only thing I want to show you is besides, he also has a control. So the control is now beneath, between his mouth and the branch, which I can enable and disable. So again, that's just the same. But the thing I would really want to show you, and that was surprising, and that's something that I think makes Unreal Engine so great. I worked with Control Rig for quite some while and I begin to work with this and this look at is actually something that can be really, really hard. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the branch actor's location and I'm updating it every tick. So when we go now to the, to the animation blueprint and take a look inside of the control rig. So here it is. So it does, it does traces for all uh, four feet. And then it does a full body I keynote to place it properly. That's not very special. What's super special is this is all the logic I need for the aim. So the aim is doing like I have the head bone and then I have a target, which is my world space location. And then it's, it's rotating the bone in that rotation. And normally that would be just snapping. It's like, he's not like, looking like that. It's like I cannot even as a human being cannot simulate it. But you, you see, I'm just setting the rotation. And what I made at the beginning is what I was used to. It's like I blend in, I blend out, I do some relay, I do some spring arm to make it look nice. And then I realized, oh, actually the physics component is doing all of that. So I removed everything. So the only thing that's left is I'm setting this value like hard. There's no blending, there's no nothing. And the rest is the physics component. So, and this is how it looks like. So here's a dog, he is seeing the stick. So he's going to the stick. He's always looking towards the stick. I'm grabbing the stick. He's following the stick. He's looking at the stick. I'm throwing the stick. He's going there, interacting with the world, bringing the stick back. Nice, good boy. Okay, and with that, I can only say big thanks to Jose Diaz who were letting me use his awesome German Shepherd. Um, and I'm done. And if you want to talk more about animation and stuff, I will be at the art station booth in a few minutes. Thanks a lot.